everyone, Josh here. So today we're removing the DPF and the two cats on the CJAA TDI. Uh, the DPF is cracked and I'm making room to be able to replace the turbo. So we got two things we're gonna start off here. Again, same thing with the EGR video. Um, it's illegal to remove emissions components. So you're doing this to replace the DPF and cats. If you're deleting it, then that's up to you, but it's a federal law in some countries. So do your research before you do illegal things, but I'm not here to tell you what to do. The other thing is make sure you're very safe doing this. So to remove all these components, we need as much height as we can get. So I'm doing this on jack stands. I've got my Princess Auto jack stands as high as they go. So Princess Auto is kind of the Harbor Freight of Canada. So I've also got some tires jammed underneath here just in case they don't, like in case they give out or if the car rolls off the jack stands, I've got something else. Um, you're also going to want your back tires block to kind of prevent it from rolling out of the driveway. So yeah, safety is very important because we're going to be underneath there reefing around. Um, I've been ran over once by my truck and it's not much fun. The surgery kind of sucks after as well. So yeah, don't get crushed here. So again, we've we got the DPF up top here. It's going to go out the bottom. We're going to have to take the passes, passenger drive shaft off to kind of fit it down and around. Uh, we've got this big old cat up front. That's going to be nice and easy. Um, you can steal your wife's yoga mat. They're a lot better than laying on the concrete. Um, after that cat, there should be an exhaust valve here, which I stole for a buddy and ended up mine was seized as well. So that was a wasted project. Um, and then we've got the second cat here, which is this little guy. So again, a little V-band would clamp onto your exhaust flap. And then it's got a, just a slip joint at the back, which if you live in a salty state or province, the clamp just falls apart. So I just hit it with a hammer and it all fell off. So we've already got the second cat out. So we're going to start with the first cat. Okay, it's always kind of hard to film underneath cars here, especially when you're on the ground. Um, but we've got the cat here with just an Allen V-band clamp. And we've got this, what looks like an oxygen sensor. So it's basically runs under over here and with the exhaust flap harness underneath this panel. So it's all held on by these little plastic 10 mil nuts. So they come off pretty easy. Um, going back together just be really not easy or take it easy on them because they do strip out. So we're gonna get this plastic drop down so we can get this uh, knock sensor unplugged and get this cat out of here. Okay, with that out of there, we got a lot more room here now. So this flap, um, I just taken this heat shield off, just a bunch of button connectors. So that's part of the body harness. So that's gonna be staying here. Um, this wire here goes to this connector and actually zip tied here as well. So we're gonna cut the zip tie. This is just a regular old Volkswagen connector. You push at the back here and then slide it off. Um, you sometimes have to kind of push the connectors together and then put that push that button and then pull it apart. Um, so yeah, I'll do that off camera because I have two hands. And then this orange sensor or this orange plug is for an EGT sensor. You can follow the wiring up the front here and it actually goes camera's not going to focus but that's where the low pressure EGR port was and there's an EGT sensor or exhaust exhaust temperature sensor exhaust whew, exhaust gas temperature sensor <laughs> on top of that um by that uh port so I'll worry about that later right now we're just getting this back piece out okay I just thought I'd include this because I see the sensors get butchered all the time um, so you push on this connector here at the very end, really hard, and you hear a click. So that's the locking tab releasing. And you push it back down, it's locked down again. Um, these get full of gravel and stuff, especially underneath here. So they can sometimes be really hard to unhook. So what you can do sometimes is very gently put a pick in the backside, and you can just kind of feel it grab the lock, and then just gently pull it up. So the aim of the game is don't break this connector. So if pushing it together and going like that doesn't release, you can get in there. I'll show a picture here. Okay, looking in from the end here, you can see that little locking tab right above my thumb. 
So if I push, you can see that piece tilt up. So if you're very gentle with the pick, you can pop that up and that releases from this lock right here. Nice and easy. Okay, so these V-bands are great until they look like that. Which then they kind of get stuck on there. So if beating it up a little bit doesn't help. You can get your pry bar in there. And sometimes it'll pop. There we go. Which I probably missed that on camera now. Um, let's try this other side here. There we go. So now we just got one on the top side. We have to try and release yet too. Which I'm putting the camera down for that one. Okay, so that deep, or that uh, cat is out of here. So up next we're doing the DPF. So the life of a criminal would be a lot easier. You could just hypothetically cut this here, take this drive shaft out, and then this DPF should just slip straight down here. Um, the issue with that is that DPF would only be scrap value. You would probably wouldn't be able to use it as a core. So you need to keep this tail end all together with the DPF. So we gotta go out the trans tunnel, which kind of sucks. So either way, we're taking the axle out of here and we're also gonna take this EGT sensor, which I shoved my hand up in there. The one with the 90 here. I'm gonna take that off, get that out of the way so that the DPF has a little bit more room to wiggle on the way out. So I'm gonna pop that out here now and hopefully it comes out nicely. If not, I'll just cut it. Okay, so underneath here, getting this EGT sensor freed up. So it's a 17 mil nut. Um, there's a 100% chance of smashing your knuckles on everything underneath here. So you're definitely going to want to use the box end of a wrench or a line wrench. Um, sadly, I don't have any 17 mil oxygen sensor removal tools. So a box end of the wrench just so happens to slip over the sensor connector. Pretty snug, but it fits. So you can get your box end on there and crack it loose. I've already smashed my my hand so I can just walk that off there now. Okay so I've got the drive shaft unbolted and it's part the DPF's part of the way out there but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Um, got the DPF differential sensor still plugged in so I'm going to unbolt from this bracket to get that out of the way um, and then all these EGT sensors and that lambda or oxygen sensor that runs over to this nice bundle of three right here. So we're going to unplug them and kind of fish them over so that way they can all go down with the uh, DPF. Um, I don't really want to have to undo them up here because a lot of times the threads come out with them. So I got a little ahead of myself on plugging stuff. So the group of three that is on the front side of this bracket. Uh, one was the bottom one was the O2 or the Lambda sensor. There's an orange one which would be EGT sensor going with the DPF, but there's also a black one. And this one is for the pre-turbo EGT sensor, so it can stay. Um, but there's also a red or brown one in behind here. So if you just kind of gently pull that like that, you'll find a connector in behind as well. So once all those are unplugged, you kind of fish them over. So they're just kind of hanging out here. And then you'll have your differential sensor here. You have to get it off of this rubber pipe. And now I think we're ready to get this DPF out of here. For that to include, you gotta make sure you remove this piece. So that's what would have bolted the DPF, the bottom of the DPF to the block, like so. Um, it works good when you've kind of got it sitting down on a 45, not quite starting to roll it out yet. You get it in there with an impact because these are get pretty rusty. You don't really have much of a swing because your block of the engine's right here. So if you kind of start getting it rolled out, you can get onto these ones pretty nice and easy. Okay, so underneath here, the DPF just kind of hanging. So you're going to have to kind of rotate it out and then out here. 
Um, so it is a very tight fit without dropping the subframe. Um, so it's, yeah, it's got a fit between there and the rack. Um, you can drop the subframe down a little bit, but then you're going to require an alignment because now everything's out on the front. So I prefer to keep that all together if I can. So we're just going to kind of rotate and jiggy this out. Uh, the Passat I did, my last video on, it was very tight as well. And I originally tried keeping the sensor in, which it kind of got jammed and it was just was not a good time. So my flex, flex pipe's broken as well, so it's really good it's coming out here now. Okay, we're getting there, so it's starting to kind of come out. Um, you've got to get the DPF kind of rolled in and lay down flat. Uh, there's some AC lines uh, near passenger foot well. It's got a clamp on it. Um, it kind of came down and then the V-band got stuck on it and it was kind of binding up between the AC lines and the um, axle of the output. So I went up top and kind of shimmied it a bit. And now we're sitting here. So as you can see, it's fairly tight. So we got to try and get it sitting over here a little bit better and then uh, should be able to walk it on out here. Okay, so we're pretty well home. So the issue I keep running into is the pipe keeps, keeps getting jammed into the ground and my yoga mat. So just keep kind of keep an eye. You can kind of fold it up here. But just kind of keep walking itself out. And down it comes. So now you just got to kind of fish all your harnesses through. Just like that. She's out. Okay, so here's everything out. Our back one, middle one, and then the DPF. Um, so that's our bottom of the differential sensor where it comes up. Um, this is the one by the washer or the coolant reservoir. So it picks it up after the DPF. And also this tees in before the DPF. And then this one here that line that's still on the car there would actually be this line. That's the one that goes to the EGR cooler. And then again, tees into after the DPF. So that'll be checking your low pressure EGR differential pressure uh, to make sure that filter there isn't plugged. Um, we've got a EGT sensor right here in the inlet. I've got one in here farther down, the Lambda Row 2 sensor. So nice, quick and easy removal. So now you're ready for your repair or whatever you're doing with this setup here. And uh, yeah, hopefully it helped. Oh, there's that third sensor or fourth sensor that would have went in here. But yeah, that's the end of this. So thanks for watching.